Hi everybody, Doug Hippie from EAC Product Development Solutions with another tip of the week. Today I'm going to create a very quick drawing template. The benefit you get from drawing templates are going to be the ease of being able to set your views and their view states as well as adding dimensions or if you want to do cross sections and items like that. These can be a very helpful tools, so I encourage you to explore them and take a look at them. Let me give you an example. This current part here, when I create a drawing, we're going to just uh, give it a name. I'm going to uncheck my default template. You always see this default template in there, and I can have it set so that it automatically grabs that template. So I'm going to say, let's use a template. I'm going to browse to where my formats are and introduce that template. Now, you'll notice that my drawing has been created with the views, with their view states in there, as well as the dimensions. So let's take a look on how we need, what we can do that and set that up. So you're going to start with doing a drawing, and in this case here, I'm going to do a D-size template, so I'm just going to give it the name of D-template. Uh, uncheck where it says use default template, and again, the name that you choose can be whatever makes sense for your business. In this case here, I'm going to say let's choose an empty format and let's make sure that there's nothing shown in the default model field. So delete anything that might be in there. Select empty with a format in there and browse to the desired format. In this case here, I want to use this D size format because I'm creating a D size template. These formats will be your company formats that you're using. I'm going to say OK. Now you're going to see some prompts here. In this case here, I'm being prompted for the job number. So I'm just going to type in ampersand job underscore NO, just like you see the display up above here, except I'm just going to add the ampersand. What this is doing is giving it the ability for that uh, parameter to be written into the field that it's uh, relative to right now. And we'll just fill these things in. All right, so if I do look down on my title block here now, I'll notice that my parameters are all exist and they're ready to go for me. Now comes the fun part of creating that template. So while you're in your drawing, you select the tools tab and then you'll notice in the applications area, there's the template application. Now you're in template mode and if you're familiar with that with Creo Elements Pro 5.0 and the Wildfire, that was in the Applications menu drop-down. Now I'm going to go over here into the Layout tab, and in that Layout tab is the Template view. So I can pick on the Template view, and you get a new dialog box that comes up. In this case here, I'm going to rename the default so that I'm going to show that this is going to be my front view. The view type I'm going to leave at General, but you'll notice that the orientation that it specifies is relative to the front by default. I can change that to any of the pre-created views that I have in my part template. So you do need to be cognizant of your start parts and the views that have been established within those start parts. In this case here, I want to add a scale and I want it to be full size right off the bat. I'm not worried about process step, my model display. I want to have my hidden lines shown. So I want the display state to be set to hidden line. Tangent edges, pretty self-explanatory. Not going to worry about setting any snap lines, but I am going to check the dimensions box. You'll notice that everything is grayed out until I activate it by checking the box to the left. I'm going to say let's create those snap lines, and I'm actually going to give an incremental spacing of a value of 1 in this case, and we're going to take it from there. All right, so I'm going to place the view. I've now got the new dialog box that gives me the ability to really finely put the location for this. In this case here, I'm just going to set it right here about in the middle. All right, that gives me the ability to very quickly go in between those. Now, if I'd like to have a new view, I can set new view, or I can also right click and say insert template view, so I can do the same thing here. All right, so we're just going to say OK here. I'm going to say let's insert a template view. Comes up with my new view. I'm going to give it the name of right. And as I tab out, 
In this case here, I'm actually going to select projection as a view type, and you'll notice that it automatically has identified my front view as being the parent view for that projection. Same area here, I want to set uh, view states. If I'd like to have an explode state, I can establish that. Or maybe even a cross section in this case here. If you've got cross sections that are predefined in your parts, you've got that capability. I'm going to go ahead and say we want to show hidden lines again. And I also want dimensions. Now, you'll notice the set display priority comes up. And what this does is gives us the ability to say, I want to have the front view have the priority for my dimension display or the right view, depending on how you want to do that. In this case here, I'm going to leave that at front view. Place my view. I'm just going to place it over here to the right of that front view. And then we're going to go back over here to the, to the box and say, OK. I want to insert another template view. And this is going to be isometric this time. OK. So we'll tab through that. I want to leave this set at general. I'm not going to do a, a front view. And I'm also going to note that my orientation is going to be isometric. Again, when you define this, you need to make sure that that value or that name that you've given there exists in your start part so that it uh, shows up. We're going to go down to the model display. And this time here, we're going to say, let's display that shading with edges. I do want to give it a scale, and I'm going to leave it at a half scale on there so it's a little bit smaller and I don't have to worry about that one and we're going to place the view here up in the upper right hand corner okay so it literally is as simple as this if I'd like to now I can just go ahead and save this to where I'd like to have it into my format director or what have you okay so let's go back over here to our other part here and we're going to create a new drawing We're going to uncheck using that default template because I want to use one that exists. This is the model that I want to use here. I'm going to say, let's use a template. I'm going to browse for it in this case here. It's still uh, in session. I haven't saved it anywhere, so I'm going to use that D template from session. The benefit of using this as in session is I can fine tune this if I'd like. So maybe I don't want to have the dimensions on this right hand view. So I can go in there and I can double click on it and I can get into the information relative to it, okay? So I can go back over to my template and make changes. You can see how quickly this made the ability for me to create my drawings. Now bear in mind, these are gonna show your dimensions. If the dimensions don't exist, you're gonna have to add those dimensions. This goes back into the basics of parametric modeling and the fundamentals of capturing your design intent during the modeling phase. And as long as you've captured that design and manufacturing intent, those dimensions that get shown in your drawing are gonna be valid for your downstream applications. Give this a try. If you need more information, reach out to your friendly EAC account manager. Let them know you saw one of Doug's tip of the weeks and you'd like to get more information. This is Doug Hippie from EAC Product Development Solutions with another tip of the week. Thanks and have a great week.